All right, so I figured I would do a, uh, just a basically comment video. <clears throat> Been uh, extremely busy the last week. The uh, last video I put out was the um, Caterpillar generator getting that running. And I have really haven't spent any time in the shop since then. <clears throat> so I figured what I would do uh, is go over a video that I've been talking about making for a while and it's basically on Onan engines uh, and I'm going to specifically keep my comments to the Onan powered units so uh, the 316 which is Onan powered also you have the older 316 with Kohler powered but the Onan powered 316 the 318 and the 420 um, don't really want to get into the <clears throat> um, like the F910s and stuff like that because I think that's a, a whole different ball of wax. But what I want to talk about is uh, some of the common misconceptions that people have on Onans themselves. <clears throat> and certainly a misconception that I had when I first got into uh, working on these machines. Probably the biggest misconception is parts are not available. Um, parts are very readily available for the B and the P series Onans that are in um, the John Deere garden tractors from the 80s and early 90s. Um, there's just tons of parts, used and new, out there. As far as I know, um, I think you can source most parts brand new if you need to. Um, maybe there's some valves or lifters that you can't, but I think for the most part you can source absolutely everything you need to, um, new, and I know you can get it used. I mean, there's tons and tons of these engines out there. So parts is not necessarily a problem. That's probably one of the biggest things that I see, uh, comments online, forums, Facebook, um, things along those lines is, and comments that I hear from people, it's like, well, I don't want to buy that because you can't get any parts for it. Parts for Onans are out there. Um, <clears throat> I have, uh, I've discussed a couple outlets for, to buy parts from uh, numerous times. Uh, and then the second thing that I, I probably the biggest one, uh, and, and I'm going to cover two things here at the same time. Um, the next biggest thing that I hear is parts are expensive or rebuilds are expensive. Um, Parts are no more expensive for Onans than OEM Kohler parts. <clears throat> now that doesn't mean that Sten's parts aren't available or, or reproduction parts. Um, they are not readily available for Onans. But Kohler parts have, uh, Kohler's a much larger market. Uh, so there were more, more machines had Kohler's in them. Whereas the Onans, you know, if you're more commercial grade machines had Onan, so wheel horse, um, some of this, the, the older Sears garden tractors, uh, they had some of the old B series engines in them, uh, and then John Deere. <clears throat> and I don't know about Bolands or not. I'm not, I'm not an expert at all about Bolands. Um, but a lot of people say that the, the parts themselves are expensive when, you know, I would say on a, a on an OEM basis, they're no more expensive than Kohler. And on a new basis, um, like a, a reproduction parts, Kohlers are going to be cheaper to rebuild, period. Um, now, one of the things that pe people often tell me is, well, they're expensive to rebuild. Onans are not necessarily uh, technically expensive to rebuild, but what a lot of people do is they type in Google rebuilding an Onan. And then you have this myth out there that rebuilding an Onan is going to cost you a minimum of eleven to $1,200 by the time you buy the oversized pistons and the oversized rods and the valves and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I haven't looked in many years, but onanparts.com may actually, I mean, they, they used to have whole kits that were like 1200 bucks, and they're probably much more than that now. Uh, comes with the gaskets and everything else that you need uh, to rebuild an engine. Oftentimes, uh, these Onans, the B and the P series, do not need to be rebuilt that way. Um, <clears throat> you can have, and this is where you get into some of the more um, opinionated parts, and, and I, I mean, my opinion is my opinion. Uh, you can take it with a grain of salt. Um, a lot of times, if you have a thousand hour Onan engine 
and it's smoke and it's down on compression. Oftentimes you can get away with pulling the engine apart, uh, putting new rings in, making sure that there's nothing wrong with the cylinders, honing the cylinders, and putting it back together, and that engine's going to be serviceable for another 500 or 1,000 hours. And frankly, you shouldn't be using these machines in a commercial setting anymore. Um, they're almost 35, 40-year-old technology at this point. Um, I mean, from 1983, we're talking, you know, development of the 318 was probably took place in, in 80, 81, 82. Um, you know, it's, it's 40 years old at this point. It's a 40-year-old machine. And so <clears throat> there's no reason to be using those machines for commercial service. And that's not to say they can't, but it, you probably should not be. And so if you take apart an engine and, you know, invest $300 in putting it back together, um, I don't necessarily see a problem with that. I mean, I, I rebuilt a P218 and converted it to a P220, so I bought the carburetor and the, the camshaft, and I had less than $500 in the rebuild. And it's the, it's the actual engine that I have in my 318, which subsequently is now has a valve problem, but that is probably on my end. It's not necessarily something wrong with the, the engine itself. That's probably strictly a, a problem on my end that I eventually have to answer that question and actually get back to it. And so when you start talking about the expense of an own end and rebuilding it, um, don't always assume that the engine needs a full and complete rebuild because oftentimes they do not. One of the biggest misconceptions or one of the biggest issues that I see is People try to order parts before they have the engine torn apart. Um, biggest piece of advice I can give to anyone wanting to rebuild an Onan, tear it apart, then determine what you need. And I'm talking, <clears throat> make an individual line item of the gaskets, uh, you know, down to the, okay, I need this gasket, this gasket, and this gasket. Because oftentimes it's actually cheaper to buy individual gaskets than it is to buy an entire set because... You know, sometimes you don't need an oil pump gasket set. Sometimes, you know, you don't need a, um, you don't need a, a point and condenser cover set. Um, you know, the list goes on, you know, maybe you have a gasket around from something else or, you know, so on and so forth. It's just, there's no, there's no need for some of those gasket sets. Um, they obviously provide a one-stop shop if you need to, but. Um, not something I would necessarily get into. And then probably the next big thing that I see is people say, well, you can repower it cheaper. You can. Um, you know, if you're talking about a full rebuild of an Onan engine, I think you can. Uh, you can probably put a Predator engine from Harbor Freight in there um, for, you know, decent money. I mean, five, six hundred bucks. I don't know what a Harbor Freight engine runs right now. Meanwhile, if you're going to put a big Briggs and Stratton in, you're going to spend seventeen, eighteen hundred bucks by the time you get through tax and shipping, uh, or more, to repower a machine that's, you know, thirty plus years old. Uh, do you really want to do that? Um, really depends. Uh, I, I think that a lot of people like three, the three hundred and the four hundred series. I mean, obviously, I do. Uh, it goes back to that commercial service. Um, you know, if you if you like the machine and you, you like the ergonomics of it and you like using it and you got all the attachments and that's all you're going to use, I don't see a problem at all with going in and putting a, you know, $1,700, $1,800 repower in one. Um, I think it makes, you know, if you, if you enjoy it, go for it. But I think one of the things that people do is they assume that a repower is worth more than the original own end and I think that's really in the eyes of the buyer. Um, for me personally, I'm never going to value a repower worth more than an original engine um, because I am an own end fan. Now own ends, like I've said, are 40 year old, 40 plus year old designs, probably 50 year old designs. And um, you know, it's one of those deals that I, I just don't, I see a repower if you're going to use it, but but one of the words of caution I would give you is if you're going to repower a machine like a 318 or a 420, make sure that's a machine you want to keep for a long period of time. Um, that's the piece of advice I would offer. 
So to kind of sum up this video before it gets, you know, too terribly long on my thoughts on Onan engines, um, you know, parts are out there. There's not, there's not a, a shortage of parts or gaskets or anything like that that I know of. Um, parts are not nearly as expensive as most people think. Rebuilds are not as expensive as most people think. And repowers, you know, six and one, half dozen the other, it's up to you. If you want to repower it, repower it. Um, you know, but, but think long and hard about if you're going to use that machine and, and how you're going to use that machine in the future. And do you really want to invest that 17, 1800 bucks into the repower um, and then turn, you know, in a year and a half and sell it for something new? Um, and I'm actually going to do a follow-up video directly after this one that'll come out. Um, I haven't decided if I'll, I'll release it 24 hours or 48 hours later. But I'm going to do, a, a, the next video will actually be on um, my thoughts on new machines. So I will uh, save that for the next video. Thanks for watching.